and it's going to be kind of be a gradual thing that happens. But the gradual thing that's going to happen is we're going to see more inventory. We're going to see new listings spike. We're going to see transactions spike. And we're going to see active listings go down. The sellers now who don't have to sell are not going to sell. But we're going to save them for a rainy day when the market reverses. And the cool thing is, is you can't do every deal because the process is so strenuous on every every deal. Right? Creating the relationship. Figuring out what they want to do. Helping them do what they want to do. Getting it under contract. The process of the deal. And the timelines. And the inspections. And the mortgage. And the title. And all the lawyers. And everything that happens. Then the closing. It's a strenuous deal. That's why there's unlimited business. And so I'm going to turn this one deal into 10 to 20 deals over the next three to five years, which is exactly what happened. And it was exactly how my business went from nothing to 100 deals a year within that time frame. Only the people that have to sell. That's going to be the business that keeps your keeps your lights on, keeps you paying the bills. You know, it keeps income rolling in, the people that have to buy and sell. So we need to be thinking when we're talking to prospects. Nice little group this morning. Thanks for joining us today. If you're just tuning in, we're about to go through an hour of training, an hour of calls together. So have your numbers ready to, to call. And then we're going to kind of do a recap session uh, on the back end. Let me let me dive in here to, to the marketing stuff um, and kind of what I'm seeing and what I think you guys might want to be thinking about. All right. So first off, Right this second, I mean, I hope you guys realize we, we're in the crash. Um, this is 2008. <laughs> like it is it is 2008. Uh, you can see here, this is the number of transactions in the country. You can see 2008 was you know 4.12. And right now we're on track to do around 4.3. Okay. Simply put, this is 2008. Uh, what, what's going to happen next year? Who knows what's going to happen next year? And so that's kind of what I want to illustrate today. Like if we bet big on what we think, you know, when we have these huge market cycles, what you do is, is you bet big on what you think will happen based on just the commonsensical data and what has happened historically. And, and you bet big on that. You, you put your daily actions into, okay, here's, here's what happens when I go all in here and accumulate relationships and go really hard to stack listings, et cetera, et cetera. And even if your big bet that you were calling for doesn't happen, it doesn't matter because you win anyway. So let me give you an example. Like right now, I feel like interest rates are going to stay a little higher for longer than we thought. And it's going to be kind of be a gradual thing that happens. But the gradual thing that's going to happen is we're going to see more inventory. We're going to see new listings spike. We're going to see transactions spike. And we're going to see active listings go down. Because I believe that we're still going to see people that don't want to sell their homes. Even the people who, you know, the second homes and, and investors. A lot of people are worried investors are going to flood the market and stuff. I just don't see it happening because rent's going to continue to get better. Rent has leveled out in 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 in, in such a form; it's still higher, but it's 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 rising much slower. It's kind of normalizing, but it's still going up, and uh, it's going to continue to ease up. You know, whether it's one percent a year, two percent a year, zero percent a year, even if it goes down one or two percent in a year, it's really high and it's a really great return on investment. So even a lot of these investors, it's like, why would they sell? They're making a killing. So that, that just brings up the question of how is that going to happen? My point is, is that we're betting big on that to build our business, build the influence in our market, build our inventory, stack listings, and do all those things. And, and what we're setting ourselves up it for is, okay, the sellers now who don't have to sell are not going to sell. But we're going to save them for a rainy day when the market reverses. Well, let's say that the market doesn't reverse and it goes the other way. Because when the market reverses and, you know, the seller's list to trade up into something, you're going to be their agent. You're going to get two deals out of that. That's what we're setting ourselves up for. It's for a business to literally triple when the market reverses. That's what building relationships with the property owners right now does for your business over the next two to three to four to five years triples your business now let's say that the the opposite happens and we do see a price crash 
and we see that prices go down, you know, 30, 40 percent, like some of these people are are saying that's going to happen, which it, it you know, like just the way I see it, what you know, you know, their thing is affordability is crazy. And these investors are sitting on the sideline about to just unleash inventory. So there's data that they see that supports what they're saying. OK, my thing is with for real estate agents is when we bet, let's, let's say that's what you think is going to happen. Whatever you think is going to happen, let's bet big on that happening with our daily actions. And if the opposite happens, guess what? We still win big. If we think the market is going to, you know, explode, uh, you know, prices go up, active listings come down, new listings go up, transactions increase. And our business triples as that happens because we've been building relationships with property owners for, you know, the last 18 months. And if that doesn't happen. Guess what? Okay. Prices go down 30%. You tell me how easy it's going to be to sell real estate if prices go down 30%. And guess what? You created all these relationships with people who now want to buy at 30% cheaper prices. Like you, there's no way you lose. However, if you put yourself in that position and what you think happens, happens, your business triples. And if the market retracts price-wise and goes down 30% and it's really easy to sell properties and buyers have their choice and inventory goes to the moon, th that is just extending the period for you to build more influence for when the market rebounds from that situation. And then you win even bigger. So I just want to make it clear, you can't lose. There's no way for you to lose. If you're doing what you're supposed to do every day, create relationships with property owners in the market, you're going to win. Short term, long term, this is your 2008. All right. In my opinion, this is it. We're, we're bottom. What happens next year? I don't know. Will we have another four and a half million sales or is it going to go to five million or is it going to go under four? I don't know. Okay. I don't know how long this, this is going to last. Okay. But what I learned in the last crash is that closings happen every day forever doesn't matter what the market does. If you look back through all the scariest time in economic history, closings every day. And the cool thing is, is you can't do every deal because the process is so strenuous on every, every deal, right? Creating the relationship, figuring out what they want to do, helping them do what they want to do, getting it under contract, the process of the deal and the timelines and the inspections and the mortgage and the title and all the lawyers and everything that happens. Then the closing, it's a strenuous deal. That's why there's unlimited business because you can't do every deal like your your business is a microscopic dot in the entire market right so if the market retracts 50 percent which it's retracted 20 percent the entire nation went from 5 million transactions to say let's just say four let's just round it down 4 million because it was like 5.1 million last year 4.3 and it's like 18 to 20 percent retraction of transactions but guess what there's still enough business for you to do as many deals as you're willing to go work for. There's not a, you know, a limit. Now, is there only so many deals in the market? Yes. So there are, you know, there are uh, a lot of agents, you know, you know, when you break down how many deals per agent and all that stuff, it doesn't matter because none of those agents are working. What matters is, is that you can't do all the deals that are available to you at any given time. Right. And, and I want to get into kind of the, the mindset behind the prospects right now, the ones who want to, what if they could versus have to. Okay. And I think that's really important right now to understand that single thing. So I want to talk about that in a second. But of course, what I learned was closings happen every day. Business is unlimited and always to put relationships over transactions. Right before the crash, the reason I lost everything is because I didn't understand these three key details and nobody cared to sh share them with me. I don't even know if anybody really understood uh, these philosophies. All right. So, so this is what we have to do. Visualize. And I'll give you the quick one. When I lost everything, when, when I lost everything, got back in the business in 2008, um, I got back in. I was like, okay, I understand relationships over transactions, but what now? Right? How can I actually maximize this to scale my business to become the number one agent in my market? So at the time, and and this this is just an example so that you can apply it to today's market. At the time, foreclosures were rampant. 
There was like 44 closures at any given time, which is crazy for my market on MLS. They weren't like at the courthouse steps. They weren't off market. Like these had made it to MLS, which means there was a lot more foreclosures than that. So all the foreclosure agents that were just getting handed deals from banks, they were making a killing 40, 50 grand a month, literally just getting handed business on a silver spoon. I was like, I want to get that job. And I realized really quickly, long story short, that that wasn't the job I wanted because you're basically like, they treat you like a slave. They make you go to properties. They make you like fix stuff and deal with the landscaping and, you know, run you all around all the stuff you have to do. I was like, I don't want to do all that. I tell you what, let me visualize how this thing's going to work because none of the foreclosure agents answered their phone. I said, okay, you're not going to answer your phone. I know what's going to happen here. As the foreclosures go away, you're going to go away. I don't want to be one of you agents who are going to go away. I'm going to be one of the agents that comes out of this and triples and quadruples my business. And here's how I visualized it. I was like, instead of representing the banks and all the foreclosures, I'm going to go represent the buyers on these foreclosures. And then in three years, when foreclosures go away and prices go up, my clients that bought the foreclosures at the bottom are going to sell that property. There's another deal. They're going to upgrade to another property. There's a third deal. They're going to refer me to four or five of their friends. There's four or five more deals. And so I'm going to turn this one deal into 10 to 20 deals over the next three to five years, which is exactly what happened. And it was exactly how my business went from nothing to 100 deals a year within that time frame. And, you know, all the stuff that happened after that was literally because I visualized that moment and I said, here's how I'm going to take advantage. And then I put the daily actions in place to go find the buyers for the foreclosures that were half off. These properties were 50% off. It was like easy. You know, yeah, I had to show some properties, shake some hands, kiss some babies, have lunches with clients and families and stuff like that. But at the time I was loving it because I went from, roofing and working on an oil rig to like having lunch <laughs> to make them to make a living and so it was fun to me anyway that's my little story of visualizing the moment to multiply my business you can do the same thing right now we know that you know the market is going to resurge massively right we're at four million transactions five million is kind of a normal market we know where it's going to jump 20 percent a market, a market, like a, a, a down market can fluctuate your business. I was talking to Ben Steven. He was on my podcast a couple of days ago. His business is down like 20% right now. Okay. His business is down 20% in this down market, but he's like doubling up on his database. So what's cool is, is when a market retracts on one of these 10 year cycles, it can fluctuate your business 10, 20%, something like that. Never go to zero never go to zero, but it can fluctuate at 10, 20, maybe even 30%. That's okay. But the cool thing is, is if you do it right during when the market's down and as the market resurges, you can literally triple your business. So the market can fluctuate your business on the downside, 10, 20, 30% at the worst, but it can, it can double, triple three, four X your business on the back end. That's what's really cool about working these 10 year cycles and these yearly cycles. So we got to visualize where we're going and bet big on this. All right, let me get where I can see you guys. There we go. So where are we? 2008 level of transactions. Home prices are holding up just fine. And we've got historic pent up demand. All right. So let's talk about that real quick. The reason that I feel like we have historic cool pent up demand is because of two things. One, the sellers who are sitting on low rates who want to move, but can't because of high interest rates, they're just dying to move. They just can't because it doesn't make sense to go from three and a half percent to six and a half or seven and a half or whatever. So what does that tell me? It tells me that when the market resurges and these sellers decide, okay, now it's time to go whoever has created their relationship with the most of those people, their business is going to triple. That's why when, when, when people, when sellers are telling you that they might want to sell, they could, if they would, they don't know where they would go. Don't try to figure out how to turn them into a, to a deal today. 
understand that the only people doing deals right now are the people that have to do a deal and investors. Okay, we're down to 2008 levels. Okay, which means we're we're as low as it gets because think about 2008. There were 4 million active listings and there were 4 million deals. Right now we have under a million listings and 4 million deals. So back then there was enough inventory. There just was no demand. Now there's no inventory and plenty of demand. If there was more inventory, we'd have more transactions. Um, so in my opinion, 2008 was a good example of like, like rock bottom demand. Okay. Only the people that had to buy and sell and investors. So what do we need to be thinking about with this? As we're talking to prospects, it's like, you need to start kind of categorizing your prospect. Is this somebody who wants to, if they could, or if this is somebody that needs to, because their mom died, they, um, you know, their, their lease is running out, they're pre-approved, they're going to buy, they want to buy, they're, they're like set on buying and their lease runs out in 60 days. You know, the people that need to versus the people that want to. And quit trying to make the people that want to into a person that needs to. Yes, follow up with them. Yes, work them. Yes, help them. Follow that until it turns dead. But don't put all your eggs in these baskets of people that just want to buy or sell. Because chances are, they're not going to do anything right now. However, those are the exact clients that will triple your business in two years as things level out. So we got to stack, 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 stack these people in our database and do the weekly email. And social media, simple as that. So we've got the people who don't need to sell, not going to sell because of interest rates. All right. And then we've got the 33-year-olds. Okay. So historic pants up demand. All right. 33-year-olds, birth rates, 50-year birth rates. You see the spike in 1990. 33-year-olds. These are 33-year-olds. You see how much it spiked up from the previous decade and a half really two decades it's about a two decade high now now you see the line went way up here this is the baby boomers so that was crazy but look how low it got and now we're up big from there and it stays there for 16 17 years so much demand from first time home buyers okay ridiculous okay so here's the opportunity that i see only the people that have to sell. That's going to be the business that keeps your keeps your lights on, keeps you paying the bills. You know, it keeps income rolling in. The people that have to buy and sell. So we need to be thinking when we're talking to prospects: Does this person have to buy or sell, or do they just want to? If they want to, that's fine. We'll help them. We'll work with them. We'll see where it goes. But at the same time, we know chances are pretty low that they're going to do something. So don't put all your eggs in the basket of prospects who just want to or thinking about it or might or they could or whatever. And continue on your search, creating a list of people that have to buy and sell because those are the people that are actually doing deals and also investors. Every single conversation that you have right now you need to end that conversation, and I'll repeat this if you don't get this the first time I say it. Every At the end of every conversation, okay, regardless if it's an online lead, if it's a pro circle prospecting, if it's a, you know, uh, you know, expired for sale bound or whatever, no matter how the call goes, and a lot of times this will bring a dead call back to life. It didn't go good. They're kind of weird. It's awkward. You know, we're getting off the phone. Listen, hey, before I let you go, let me ask you this one thing. If I had a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested? And just listen, see what they say. And what you need to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is stacking a list of investors. Like I'm buying houses every single month. There's investors that are buying properties every month. I'm selling properties. I'm buying properties. I'm 1031-ing. There's tons of people doing that. Investors buy and sell in any market. So I'm buying and selling now. Market's up. Prices are all-time highs. I'm buying. If prices go down, guess what? I'm buying. As If prices continue to climb, guess what? I'm buying. I'm selling. I'm buying. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking and moving. That's what investors do. You need a stack of investor clients right now, a big stack of them. And you're talking to these prospects anyway. 
Why not ask if they had, if you had a great deal on a rental property, would they be interested? Yeah, I would. What you got? Well, I, I have all kinds of stuff. I get off market deals, stuff ac across my desk. I run into stuff. What do you look? What do you like? Single family, multifamily, commercial, warehouse, strip centers, you know, RV parks. What do you like? And understand what they like as an investor. Um, and and put them on your list, and then guess what? Go find it for them. Send them deals. Right, and and you guys should be studying and looking at MLS hot sheet every day. Anyway, I've said that a million times. Watching your MLS hot sheet every day, and as you're watching your MLS hot sheet, you're going to see deals that line up with some of the criteria of some of the of your investor, your new investor clients you've ran into making calls. Right, and so now we're now we're starting to put all this stuff together, and we're, and we're, what are we doing? We're creating demand. As a real estate agent, Gary Vee said this to, to Ryan Serhan. It's just like stuck with me. Like we have the ability to create our own demand. Like we can create it out of thin air. It's incredible. So right now, we need to be thinking about the people that have to buy and sell because those are the people, really the only people doing deals. Investors, only people doing deals. Stacking everyone else into our database to do the weekly email, which is where we're going to be building our massive influence. That's what I mean by that. Yeah, that, that it's a 95 5 rule. 5% 5 of people are going to do something today, 95 or not. Take the 95, stick them in your database, create a great first impression, and let them know when they decide to do something, you're their guy, you're their girl. And when the market shifts and they decide to do something, if you stack hundreds and maybe even thousands of these people in your database, guess what? Your business explodes. And of course, when a stack listings, I was looking at, I'm speaking in uh, Sarasota next week and I was looking at their stats. Their their inventory is up like 25% over last year. Like the whole nation is down 17% right now, year over year. The Sarasota area is up 25%, right? Down 17 nationally, up 25 locally. Wow. And prices are are prices are up like, I don't know, 10% on the year nationally since January 1st. They're literally dead even in uh, Sarasota. So everything's local. But you know what that tells me? It's like, oh my God, what an amazing opportunity to stack listings. Days in the market are up. Uh, inventory is up. Uh, prices are flat. You know how easy it would be to stack 20, 30, 40 listings in the Sarasota area right this second? Incredibly easy. And that's what you need to be thinking about. It's just stuff like that. Looking at the data, figuring out where the opportunities are short and long term. This is where I'm betting big on the market. I believe that if I'm stacking my listings, if I'm creating these relationships with people who don't necessarily want to do something today, and I'm I'm just stirring the pot, I'm helping my investor people do my thing. I think this is where the market's going. I think we're going to see new listings spike. Which, by the way, I don't know if you guys have watched data, but we're seeing that, not a spike, but we're seeing an increase right now in new listings. Which we kind of normally see this time of year, but it's a little higher than normal. I don't know if you guys are paying attention to that. That's nationally. I don't know what it's doing in your local markets. But nationally, we're seeing new listings kind of tick up a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, higher than normal. Okay, I think I think what's going to happen is the trade up seller is going to come in. They're going to put a property on the market, and then they're going to buy something, which takes a property off the market. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna put they're gonna add a, add a unit to the market, which adds to new listings. But they're gonna take a listing off the market which is a net even for active listings. You follow me? You know, they, they added a listing, took one off, net even. Then you've got the first time home buyers that are going to come out in droves and they don't have a listing to add to the market. They're just going to take one off the market. So that's going to be a net negative for active listings. So what I foresee is that we're going to see a spike in listings. We're going to see transactions shoot up and get back to the 5 million range, maybe next year, maybe the year after, you know, next year's an election year too, by the way, <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll see what, what, what weird stuff happens next year, but I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And the longer it takes to get there, the bigger your business will explode. If you're doing the things you need to do in the meantime, 
transactions are going to spike big time, but we're going to see active listings drop. This is kind of how I feel like it's going to play out. Now, again, if it doesn't play out that way, great. <laughs> like if prices go down, awesome. How easy is it going to be to sell real estate? So think about this short-term, long-term, uh, betting on the market, lining up your daily actions to whatever the goal is. For me, it's to be the number one agent on the market. For me, it's to make a million bucks a year. For me, it's to stack inventory and build influence. For you, I don't know what it is. Some of you aren't as ambitious. Some of you are even more ambitious. It's great. All right, any questions on this before we get into some role-playing? Hey, Ricky, can you say again the line that you tell people um, when you get off the call in regards to investors? Yeah. So um, like if, if the call goes great, maybe I'm using this to bring the call back to life and they're fixing to get off mad or whatever, or this weird, or maybe it was a great conversation. It doesn't matter. Every call I'm like, hey, well, listen, before I let you go, let me ask you this. If I had a great deal, smoking hot deal on a rental property, would you be interested? <laughs> then I'm just going to see what they say. Maybe they don't, maybe they don't buy rental properties. Great. Cool. Just wondering. I run across stuff all the time. Right. If you need something, let me know. Whatever. If they do, now we're into this whole other conversation where I want to just go deeper and deeper and deeper with them and understand exactly what it is they want to do. If they would buy something right now, if I found something, you know, and just continue, continue down that road. Awesome, man. Thank you. I have a question about uh <clears throat> using the dialogue. I'm using the, uh, I'm with the EXP KV core. I can push the leads in. So once I start dialing, it has phone number, address, all the information I need. If they don't answer and I, I can still push the lead into my database. Can I still market to them? Even though I haven't got their permission to email them. Can I send them the newsletter? Anything I like would. That? Okay. I, I want to, I would too, but I, I just wanted to make sure that's, that would be like, you know, you're making the call. You want to get permission to get, or get their email mm. so that you can send them the weekly newsletter. But, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't going to answer and I still have their email mm. through the um, <clears throat> through the dialer. So I just want to know if that would count as a good lead or good contact. Yeah, I would. You don't know if it's a good contact until you send them some stuff and they call you sure. one day and say, hey, I want to buy this. Yeah, one of the things I'm doing is I, I I came over from another company and I had a big database and it was a mess and I'm going through the whole database. I've got contact, I'm calling, a lot of crap in there, numbers are no good, but the emails seem to be good. So I'm mm. setting everyone up on email communication and what's happening is I can see them coming back to the website, looking at the properties. Yeah. So now I've got 60, just what, what I'm discovering out of a thousand I had 6,000 names, numbers, emails. Mm. Out of 1,000, I've got 60 now that are coming back, looking at properties, and yep. then I'll send. Okay, that's all. Cool. I just That's what I'm doing. Nice. Anybody else? Yeah, hey, first? Ricky. What was the, what would you say about, like, new active listings? Like, we're going to see less of that. Is it because of interest rates going down, or oh, I, I missed that part? <laughs> Well, and again, guys, just just to just so you know, okay, none of this matters. Okay, it doesn't matter what the market does. Closings are going to happen every single day. That's why that's why you can't lose, right? You just go all in on this, full confidence. You're going to crush it, and then go crush it. It's really that simple. Um, thinking too much into the market and what's going to happen. It's like make your bet and then commit. And then let it play out for a couple of years and go hard as you can. Um, but active listings are going to go down because as interest rates ease, sellers are going to, you know, some sellers are going to sell because, you know, they've been wanting to forever and they're finally going to say, okay. So they're going to add one to the market and take one off. But then first time home buyers will take one off. So it'll be a net negative for active listings. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I was just curious because I know I'm I'm doing some work right now to get a couple of deals in place. I was just curious, you know, what what you were talking about about seeing less active. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. Let you know more new listings. Like we'll see the new listings go like this, but then we'll see active listings. I believe do that. 
Yeah. Thank It'll you. Go from bad to worse. Gotcha. Hey, Ricky, on a, on a call when somebody's like, you're just following up with somebody, uh, what's your action plan look like um, following the call? What What is it? So like following a, a call that's expired or for sale by owner, obviously you don't get the appointment right away, but you're going to stay in front of them. So apart from just like, you know, calling them, let's say they tell you like, hey, call me back in October. So you're going to call them back in, you know. Why uh, am I, Why are they telling me to call back in October? Um, Because maybe at that time they're ready to have that conversation, whatever the case might be. This is a for sale by owner? Uh, expired. Okay. So an expired. They want to have that conversation in October. Say, are you saying you, you're going to, you're kind of waiting until October to sell the property? Well, let's say this case, they're waiting till October because that's when the 60 days comes up. And so like, it'll be zero day active on market. And so they don't want to have that conversation till October when they know okay. that they're going to be zero days on market. Zero day, like the aftermath, of the, like once it went off the market, then there's 60 day grace period or something. Yeah. So like in Florida, like um, if you're active on market and then um, they get resigned by somebody else and they get back on the MLS. It'll say active on well, market number, zero, but well, well, number one, I would tell them that doesn't matter. Okay. A buyer isn't going to not buy the property if they want it because of what the days on the market says. Number one, there's no inventory. Okay. It means zero. Um, even less than today's market, right? So that's one thing I would explain. That doesn't mean anything. But the bigger question is, okay, why do you want to sell it? So why do they want to sell? Their motivation. Yeah. Why do they want to sell? Uh, well, I mean, they, they need to sell it because they're in a condominium uh, mm -hmm. and they're going to be getting a special assessment pretty soon. Here. <clears throat> so they smell it coming, which is not good, right? Um, well, then, so well, then, like, well, okay. So then this, then, see, this is why you dig, right? Because if they're worried about an assessment coming up and they're trying to get out of it and sidestep that, the long, every day that they have the condo, uh, puts them in a worse and worse position. Yeah. So why would we wait on uh, days on the market that doesn't matter when the bigger issue is like they could enforce this assessment anytime? Yeah. You know? And so like that that's just that the conversation sense. I would be having with them. If that's why you want to sell, then why are you worried about this days on the market thing? Let's get this thing gone. Right? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I was, I was going to ask, like, let's say like, uh, they said yes or whatever, but like for somebody that you're just going to continue to follow up with, um, what does that action plan look like? Are you saying it, depend See, yeah. it depends on why they want to sell? Mm. I don't, okay. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you these questions, right? I got to gotcha. keep digging and digging and digging. If they say, call me back in October, I'm not going to be like, oh, okay. I'm going to be like, mm. what's going on in October? You know, is that when you want to sell? Tell me what's happening here. Like I'm their agent. Like I'm assuming that I'm their agent and I'm their consultant. So how can I be their agent and give them professional advice if I don't even know what's going like I don't I don't even know the situation here. Yeah. Like it, it, I have no idea how to follow up. I have no idea what the next step is in the process. I have no idea why they're telling me what they're telling me. That'd be like you going to a doctor and saying, my stomach hurts. And he's like, here, take these without even doing any tests or, um, you know, asking you what you ate, like nothing. He's not asking anything about what, why your stomach might hurt. He's not doing any tests to see why your stomach hurts. He's just like, here's some medicine. This should work. Yeah. Right. That see, it's a difference in being good at your job and being a professional and being an amateur. Awesome, man. Yeah. So like, it's not just like, you know, drop them into like a, a, a drip or like a remarketing or like a, just a mailer automatic. It's Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're always going to get the weekly email. Right. Everybody that, that you talk to yeah. goes in your database to get the weekly email. <laughs> so that's done. They're never going to forget about you. And you've got them on that automatic deal. You're creating an email every week that they're going to get to know you through. Right. So that's done. That's in place. Now the issue is, okay, how do we take care of this person? What do they need? What do they want to do? How can I help them do it? And if you don't know any of these answers, you've got nothing.
and you're not going to be their agent. Why? Because when you try to call them back in October, because you said, oh, I'll call you back then, or you put them on some kind of weird drip thing, they're just not, they're just like, that person doesn't even care what I got going on. And they're going to go with an agent who digs deeper. Awesome, man. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. So I, for the last like hour, two hours, I've been in the Denny's, like just prepping stuff, like comps, looking at different properties that I'm working on listing and everything. And I feel more, I definitely feel more confident looking at the hot sheets and then also going through the comps and stuff because I know that I'm what? working hard for the clients even before I have this thing. John, and... what, what, John, what, what's your question? Yep. Oh, I, I was just chiming in to, to, to Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, no, we, no, I, 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 that's cool. We, we need to do like a little role play here before you guys. So we got 14 minutes, 13 minutes, it looks like. So I want everybody to like have your dialers ready, have your list ready to roll, who you're calling, why you're calling, et cetera. Okay. Right. And right. And, and if you're circle prospecting, don't change what you're doing based on what I'm fixing to say. Okay. But I want you to keep this in mind, okay? Because a lot of agents are just circle prospecting, circle prospecting, circle prospecting. And I built my entire business on circle prospecting, every single bit of it. But right now, 90% of people have less than 6%, right? Like 65 have less than 5% or 4%. 30 something percent have less than 3%, right? These people are not selling, chances are. Now, 45% of homes out there own free and clear, no mortgage. And I'm not saying you're not going to get business circle prospecting because you will. But what I am saying is it's it's less it's less likely in today's market than it was, say, pre-pandemic or even in 2021. Heck, 2021, you're like, hey, who wants to make 100000 a day? I could sell it for 100000 over asking price or whatever. Um. It wasn't hard to circle prospect and get listings at that time. But right now you have to think efficiency. Everything's got to be, how can I be more efficient? How can I have higher quality leads? And I feel like the low hanging fruit are expired and for sale by owners and social media. You should be making calls all morning and doing social media all afternoon. That's like the perfect, that's perfection if you're doing that. Um, with expireds, I like two to 18 month old. That's my favorite. I call them if they expire yesterday, the day before and all that great too as well. But that two to 18 months seems to be a sweet spot. But these people said, Hey, I'll sell. I would sell for sell by owners are like, Hey, I'll sell like in a market with no inventory. So just think about that and diversify your prospecting. Okay. Now, Melvin, you got a question? Yes, uh, good morning, Ricky. Uh, nice to be here again. I was on your last webinar. Uh, I've been having a lot of uh, having a, a lot of luck. You know, the numbers been going up. Um, when I used the twenty eighty ratio, uh, you know, I've I've been more active. You know, making more conversations with the with the prospects. My 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 thing is that uh, at the end of the of the call, the only thing that I get is. Uh, um, texting you know people don't mind if i send them a text with our information mm. what would be like a good line for me to use in order to get their email a lot of people are like like uh okay. you know like okay I come to that wall melvin that mm -hmm. role play with me here okay um you've asked them hey you know uh is there something i can do for you and they say no right oh, let's get this one. i mean use me melanie and they say no, whatever, right? Take me through your script. Okay, so I do offer, you know, uh, if there's anything, any real estate needs uh, that I could help them with, they, they usually say no. Mm -hmm. I uh, I came up with a with a you know additional question: Are you a homeowner or are you renting uh, uh, currently? That's what you say after after you ask them that. Right before they hang up, usually they hang up right okay. before they say they're not interested. Okay. Let me ask you right before you go: Are you a homeowner or or are you renting currently? Okay. Because I don't know who I'm speaking oh, to. Sometimes I got I get it. Mind. Where do you go from there? Take me through the okay. script. And uh, from there, then I ask them. The only thing we, we're, we're trying to do at the moment is provide you our business contact. Maybe sometime in the future, a year or two, 
uh, there you have a change of heart. Okay. And uh, we just want to be there for you. We want to be the the agency that you contact when whenever you know. I get it. Mm -hmm. And then, and if they say yes, well, actually, uh, what what's the best way to uh, keep uh, to uh, send your information? E uh, you have an email where I can send it to. No, okay. you can text. Me. I got That's you. The, usually the answer. Well, there's a lot of things, a lot of problems with all that. Number one. You're, 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 you're talking too much. You're saying, Hey, you know, we want to stay in touch. We want to give you a lot of information. want to be there mm -hmm. for you whenever you do it. They're just thinking, how the hell do I get off this call? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it. Okay. Amazon, Uber, Apple, Facebook, um, all these companies, they're trillion dollar companies because why they save people time. Correct. Your business has to do the same thing. If if they if they see you're a talker, you guys know the people that call and 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 hit your caller ID and you're like, I do not want to answer this because they're gonna talk forever. You guys know right. what I'm talking about? That's what they're thinking about when after that call with you. They're like, not gonna answer his call anymore. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Like nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying we have to be more efficient with our words. We can't be long winded because right. they're like, oh, man, I I do not. I'm, I'm not going to want to do a deal with them because every time I talk to them, it's going to it's going to take up so much time when I've got kids that need to be picked up and I got to cook dinner and I got right. work to do. And here Melvin is talking to me forever. And you, and it does, it's not even forever. It's just like an extra like 10 seconds. That's eternity to people on the phone. Right. You, you feel me? Right. Mm -hmm. And so. um on average, my calls and you know, like they only take a minute, a minute and two, three seconds. Uh, I understand, you, Melvin. You consider this? Mm -hmm. Melvin, I get it, but the words you're saying within that minute are too many. Number one, it's the right. same thing with your weekly email, guys. If you have this long, drawn out weekly email and they click on it and they have to read a novel, they're never going to open another email of yours. <laughs> right. You guys see my emails, they're one sentence and a space, one sentence, big font. Big font, one sentence space, one sentence space, just like a couple sentences. Real easy to read. Boom, you get the information and you're out. That's the way the phone calls need to be as well. Okay, so right. listen, when they send out interest, they say, great, is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? Yes or no. Okay, great. I'm sure you're going to do something in the future, right? I'd love to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch? Cool. What's a good email? What you're doing is you're giving them an option. You're saying, hey, how? what's the best way to stay in touch with you? And then they're thinking, oh, well, I can just tell them text. I don't right. give them an option. I'm like, hey, can I stay in touch with you? Great. Mm -hmm. What's a good email? Okay. See what I'm saying? Right, right. Follow, follow the script. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes. I, I definitely, I'll try that. Because usually uh, I know that their time is precious. So I end up saying, Look, uh, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. I'll send you the information. It, it's uh, email fine, or I give them options. Can I send it to uh, via regular mail? Don't give Text them options. Okay, that's Melvin, what I would. Don't give them mm -hmm. options. Say, listen, say just like this, bro. I'd love to stay in touch with you. Is that okay? Yes. Cool. What's a good email? Okay. That's it. Don't don't say you're going to send them information. Don't say you're going to send them a market report. Don't say you're going to send them anything. Say, I want to stay in touch with you. Great. What's a good email? Gotcha. All don't right. talk about information, bro. Don't talk about market reports. They get like 15 market reports from, from other agents that suck. And they're like, I don't want another sucky market report. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Got Ricky, it. do you have time for one more question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a, a, a brand spanking new agent here. And um, two main questions. One, where or how do you go about pulling content um, to create a weekly email? And my apologies if this was covered earlier. Just, um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. If it's recorded, I'll, no, I, I'll could just, I could just put a link here. Okay. All right. And, and then my other question is, you know, everyone says start with your sphere of influence. And a lot of these people know that I was in a completely different industry all, all this time. And so how do you kind of reemerge, especially for people that, you know, you haven't talked to in a long time. So it's like, oh, you finally calling me back and now, 
you know, you're going to have this conversation about real estate and why would I choose you? Who cares? If... Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> Who cares what they think? Mm -hmm. I could care less what they think. I could care less if they think that I'm being uh, selfish or greedy or um, if they don't like me anymore because of this, because I know that I'm there to help them. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So when I'm calling them, I could care less what they think. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? How's it been? I'm not going to talk to them about real estate. I'm going to see how they've been doing as a human. Cause so why? Because that's why call. I'm calling. That's why I care that that's like, that's literally the reason I'm calling. Cause I want to know how they're doing. Mm hmm. So I'm just getting reacquainted with all of my contacts. That's that's the first step. And if you know what when it when the question comes up, what have you been up to? Then I fit that. You in. can do it like that. You can do it. Um, uh, you can do it where you actually go into it. You could say, hey, I got into real estate. You know, you're looking to buy or sell anything. It's perfectly fine to ask people that. And for the people that, I just need to hear this again, for the people that say, you know, I'm hearing that the rates are going to go down. I've, I'm really ambitious. I really want to sell my house or buy, okay. but I just don't have the money. I, I don't have the money um, based on these interest rates. Awesome. Great. Mm -hmm. And then, cool. that, then you just follow up with them. That's it. You just Put them in your database. Let mm -hmm. them get the weekly email and say, listen, I'm going to stay in touch with you via email. You know, when things change, when interest rates come down, when you save up enough money, whatever happens, call me. Mm -hmm. there, so there, there's people that listen. The only people that are going to do deals right now are people that have to do deals and have the ability to do those deals. Everybody else should be saved for a rainy day when the market resurges. Put in so your database to get the weekly email and continue mm -hmm. on your mission looking for people that have to buy and sell, A, and B, investors. So the the the, the talking point about rates don't matter, it's cyclical, that, that is more so for the investor talk. I, I mean, we shouldn't even be really having a conversation about rates with people. That's, that's their, that's their, that's between them and their lender. We're not mm -hmm. a lender. We're a real estate agent. We're trying to connect buyers and sellers here. It's not our job to get them pre-approved or figure out how they're going to afford this. That's not us. Our job is to connect buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that's right. Why am I, why am I talking to people about rates? You know, like. I got a good lender. Go get pre-approved if that's you know if that's what you want to do. If you're gonna go look at houses, fine. Let's go look at houses. I don't care if you're pre-approved or not. I'll go show you houses right now. But if you if you're wanting to know what you can afford before you go look, that's fine too. I got a great lender. Go talk to them. See what they can do. Let's see where you are. Mm -hmm. The rates doesn't matter to us and and investors, especially seasoned investors, they know they already know what they're doing. They know what they're they they know what they're going to borrow. They know how they're going to borrow it. They know if they're going to pay cash. They already have their banker. They already. They don't need us to talk to them about interest rates. But then the thought about, you know, if you wait, if you're, tr I'm just curious, I'm just wanting to understand. So if you, if their thought is, I want to wait until it's more so a buyer's market. Well, if you're waiting for the rates to go down, then the economy is going to be stimulated and you're going to have a hundred offers on a house and then you're going to be paying more anyway. So that's right. Let's. It, it's all cyclical. It all kind of balances yeah. out. Right? Yeah. Okay. Right. But at the same time, you don't know what's going to happen. So when you start trying to forecast what's going to happen to your buyers and sell them on a, on what you're predicting, you're, you're, and you know, and then that forecast doesn't come true. You, you, you got egg on your face. Hmm. There's no, there's no need in trying to say, Oh, listen, you help people do what they want to do. If they don't want to buy right now, awesome. Mm -hmm. Call me when you do. Where's my next prospect? Mm -hmm. You want to buy now? Great. Let's work on that. Let's get that deal done. The next prospect. I don't really know if I want to. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Okay. You don't want it to? Great. Call me when you do. The problem is we try to turn every prospect into a deal today. 
Mm-hmm. Only like 1% or 2% or 3% of people are going to do a deal today. Quit trying to force everyone into a deal. Let them go do what they want to do. You just be their friend that's here for them when they do decide to actually do a deal, which may be three years from now. Awesome. You're still going to be an agent. Thank you. That's super helpful. Cool. All right. Let's get into the calls. It is 1101 Central, 12 o'clock Eastern. Everybody have their dialers ready? All right. Everybody ready to hit dial? Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay, we're going to start dialing in three, two, one. Let's go. Hey, Jess, this is Max Weitz with Keller Williams Real Estate. How are you doing today? All together. Okay. Not at all, Very good. Really Honestly, awesome. just enjoying the little warm yeah. front we had yeah. after yeah. the past yeah. two days yeah. that, that were yeah. hauntingly yeah. foreshadowing a fall. Um, you know, that's just how we know. So. <laughs> I totally understand. And, and like yeah. Hey, I don't want to take up too much of your morning, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Right there on 106th mm-hmm. Street, your neighbor, yeah. Drew Krieger, yeah. just yeah. accepted yeah. an yeah. offer. Yeah. And I was calling yeah. to see if there was anything yeah. in the world yeah. I could do for you yeah. today yeah. regarding okay. my that makes more sense. You really yeah, you wouldn't sell it to somebody that, that don't know anybody because the phones are... I totally understand. I totally understand. It's that was like golden hands off the moment where everybody's okay. kind of going, Ooh, yeah, well, I don't know if I can ever leave this. Homes, and, yeah. and my daughter's in one and my granddaughter's in the other. Yeah, what it is? Yeah. Um, okay, so it would be better for a family who yeah. kind of, you know, people who want to live next door, probably family well, I don't blame you at all. I honestly, I don't blame it you at is, all. That is okay. such a low and rate. Then, um, I, I guess everyone I've been talking is, you know, to were thinking about selling you and get begging to keep sold. their old property. All right. Congratulations, guys. I've been listening to all your calls. Mm. Freaking incredible. All right. <clears throat> I'll give it a second for people on their last call to kind of finish up. Um, while we're waiting on everybody to finish up, um, let's go ahead and throw like a quick question while we're waiting on everybody to finish up. If anybody has like a quick question here. Yeah, I do, Ricky. Actually, uh, my name is Max Fights. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I have actually been focused, uh, solely on circle prospecting. And at the beginning of this call, you said that we should probably go after more of the more motivated people or expireds and for sale by owners. Uh, I'm assuming that's in conjunction with circle prospecting. Do you have like a hierarchy of what you would start with in the morning and then move your way through? Yeah, I'd never change lead sources during the day. Interesting. So I would do um like geo leads all day this day. Are you calling okay. like three hours or eight hours? I'm calling three hours. I, I'm okay. not going to lie. I have so I would right. stick with um one lead source a day and then just... Okay you know, change it up the next day, you know, GLEs today expires the next day, whatever. All right. Yeah. Because when you, when you try to switch, then you lose all that momentum. There's just too much. Like it's doesn't make any sense. Okay. I was, I was going to ask you if there was like a follow-up system for uh, the for sale by owner expires that you typically utilize. Mm Mm-hmm. Or do you yeah. hit them one and done and then put them in your uh, your uh, weekly? It depends on what they want to do and why. Okay. Right. So I'm going to customize that follow-up around their situation. That's fair. I don't know why they want to sell, when they want to sell, if they want to buy, what they're trying to do, you know, what their timeline is, how motivated they actually are. So I, I don't know. That's you know fair. I mean? it's yeah. E- each situation is to be followed up differently based on, you know, am I going to follow up on somebody? For example, I'm not going to follow up on somebody who, you know, is going to make a few, you know, do a little remodeling and then list it in two weeks versus someone who might think about selling in three months. You know what I mean? This is two completely different follow-up processes, you know? If you don't connect with them, like if you have to leave a voicemail, do you, will you hit them the next day or will you wait a day typically or? Um, Specifically for for sale by owner and expired, mm, I guess. I never called anybody back. All right. 
But in today's world with auto dialers, I didn't have an auto dialer. That's so fair. each dial was like a big deal to me. Um, but if I were in today's world with auto dialers and it's so easy to make so many calls and like um, disposition them in Red X and, you know, click a few buttons and call everybody back you left a voicemail for or whatever, then I would do that. I would do that a little more. Maybe dedicate like Thursday to callbacks or something, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Got it. Got it. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Ricky. Ricky. Yo. Oh, this is Marcelo. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing fine, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. I just uh, did have a question, but I did have a comment and um, I wasn't prepared for the calls nor my information today. So it was just kind of a learning process for me. But mm -hmm. I want to comment that this is uh, this is phenomenal because uh, just be able to see, um, you know, all everyone in the trenches uh, doing their best to try to make a, a connection or get a contact. It, it's just pretty, pretty inspiring. And um, and we are learning from the uh, from the things that we we believe um, are the most challenging. That's what we learn the most. So it's a mm -hmm. it's a great thing. Thank you for putting this together. Mm -hmm. To me, it was awesome. Yeah. Did you have a question? No, I did not have a question. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, it was just a comment. Thank you. So what I found interesting, um, cause we did this workshop a couple of weeks ago and I made it a lot bigger, you know, I advertised it more and stuff. We had like two, 2,200 agents register. And then I think 500 to 600 were on the call in the beginning. And then as soon as we started making calls, it dropped down to, uh, to like 220, like half the people dropped. Well, the same thing happened this time. We started out with like 250. And there was like 130 or so once we started making calls, which I found very interesting, you know, like you're showing up to this workshop and then you know, you're not making calls. You're leaving once the people, once, once we start making calls, just an observation. Is it Jizan? Oh, uh, Dijon. Dijon. Hey, how you doing? What up, dude? Um, So pretty much, I, I know you mentioned something about, you said, stick with one lead source a day, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't recommend at least calling the expires every day, being that you do get some new expires and they list within 72 hours. Most of them don't. Most of them list after a month or two. Okay. Some of them will list soon and some of most of them will list later and some of them don't list for years. Gotcha. I, li I like, I like two to 18 month old expires, honestly. And, um, what I would do is I would, if you have Red X Expireds Plus, it's piling up in your folder every day. Do you have Red X Expireds Plus? I'm using a Vulcan 7 right yeah. now. So it piles up in your folder, you know? So let it, let it pile up and then like take a whole day to call the last week's worth of expireds. Right? Okay, yeah. That's what I would do. I wouldn't focus on trying to be the first agent there when 15 other agents are calling at the same time. You know? Yeah, that's what I've been getting. I don't even well, want to yeah, get in the I don't even want to get in the middle of that. If one of those other agents win it, fine. Yeah, you know, because that's interesting focusing on one lead source a day. You know, you're putting all your time, energy, and effort into just one lead source a day. I never done it that way. So yeah, well, you get more done because if you do the expires in the morning. And then you kind of have to regroup and figure out, okay, who are we calling next? And what's the, what's the line? Let me get the data. Let me get set up. You lost all that time. You could have been making calls solid the whole time. Yeah. And then you're in a different mindset. You, maybe you had some good momentum in that first call session and you're really rocking, you know, but then you lost that momentum and now we're starting all over again. Now you feel a little colder. You know, where if you'd have just kept rocking through that really great session you had going, you had some good momentum, you could have rocked it all the way through and number one, called more people. Number two, had better conversations. Yeah, that makes sense. It's that like when you sense. have to like switch it up to a different lead source that day, you have to change your entire mentality of these calls. 
you know, what you're calling about, you know, what the, you know, I mean, the mindset behind a fair sale by owner is different than a expired circle prospecting Zillow lead, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had that. So you uh, have to like, like switch your mind, which burns energy in your brain, which mentally fatigues you. Yeah, that happened to me uh, before where I was talking to expire and then it shipped to Fizzbos and I, I still had the mindset of I was talking to expire and I had to get back focused like, oh, shoot, I'm talking to expire. I'm in a Fizzbo. See? <laughs> See? So just focus on one type a day and just, you know. All right. Thanks for that. Yeah, man. Danny, what's up? What's up, Ricky? How we doing? Good. How you doing, bro? Doing great, man. Just uh, finished up morning prospect thing and um, <clears throat> just had a quick question. First off, thank you for everything. I saw you um, in Tom's River uh, live speaking in New Jersey and mm. you got me started doing the weekly email. I've been doing it now for like six months consistently. Mm. Got my first come list me um, email response back to it. Finally, after six months, just when I was about to give up too. Um, but my question is, um, I'm a little inconsistent in the afternoon with prospecting and lead follow-up. Um, and just okay, curious. Okay, hold on. Hold on. What, what was that? You're a little inconsistent with what exactly? In the afternoon, like lead follow-up and prospecting. Okay. Like my in morning the is dialed in. Yep. Okay. What about the morning? How's that going? Oh, uh, it's great. Like I'll okay. be in the office, 730 role play, eight o'clock, you know, Eastern hit the phones, eight to 11. Um, and then we'll play again, <clears throat> have lunch like I'm doing now, but then the afternoons, like I have an appointment today at four. Um, I feel like I'm just kind of lost with like, you know, you hear all these coaches like contacts, like hit, hit, hit a certain amount of contacts, but I'm, I'm making like today I hit just under 30. Um, and then I'll do some lead follow-up in the afternoon and I have an appointment at four. Is okay. that like productive or should I be doing more where it's like hit 50 contacts? Um, but I guess it depends on my goals, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I just feel like sometimes I'll set a high contact goal, like 50 or 40, and then I don't hit it like today. And now I feel like kind of like, you know, that's why, I guess that's why you always, like, uh, that's why you always kind of try play a trick on yourself to, to, uh, to go a little under what that potential is on your goals. Right. So for example, if your goal is to hit 25 a day, all right, when you hit 30, you're excited. Wow. I got five more. Versus if your goal was 40 or 50 and you hit 30, you're like, oh, I suck, right? And the fact yep. is that 30 contacts a day over the course of five years, you're the number one agent in your market. Yeah. And I feel like too, not to get too like, um, I don't know the word, but too um, emotional or something, but I feel like I compare myself to other agents that are my age, I'm 23, who are succeeding quicker than me. Um, mm -hmm. And they're putting a little bit more time in. Um, I guess, what's your advice with that? Putting like, more being, time like, in. How are they putting more time in? like prospecting, like I'll prospect for like six to eight hours a day versus I'll prospect for like three to four. And they're, um, and they're selling more than you. Yeah. A lot more. Mm -hmm. Well, so there's a couple things. Number one, not everybody's the same. So the way they communicate is different than the way you communicate. You know, you may take longer to succeed. They may get burnt out quicker. Um, they may crush you long-term. You may crush them long-term. Like it's hard to say in the micro what the macro is going to look like. Number one. Um, number two, it may not, it may not come down at all to the number of contacts you're making versus the number of contacts that they're making. Right. It may come down to, they're a great communicator way better than you. And even if they Definitely were, I think that's one of them. Yeah. Even if they were making the exact amount of contacts, they would still be crushing you. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing different ideas out there. Why it's really dangerous to compare yourself to other agents because you're not comparing apples to apples here. It's not no, like if you prospected the, the same amount of hours that they prospected, that you would have the same results. Cause that's not true. And you can only focus on like you and you getting better. You know, yeah. So it's just a dangerous game to play when you start comparing yourself to people. Like, how many deals have you done this year? Um, this year is like really slow. Um, I would say three, but last year uh -huh. I did 10 my first year, but I'm like so much more consistent in this market and I'm prospecting more 
and my skills are night and day way better. So that's why it's like mentally, I'm like, just feel like it doesn't make sense. Cause it's like year one came in 10 deals just from open houses, barely doing circle prospecting, just learning your stuff. And now it's like, I'm dialed in, but it's just, yeah, I have a lot of listings right now, but a lot's just like overpriced. Um, so I do know it's going to just bubble is going to pop. I could feel it. I have so many people on the sidelines, buyers and sellers. Um, but I'm also focusing more on sellers a bit just through the prospecting. So I think that's a big, big difference. More people were buying a year ago with the rates, you know, under 3% or two years ago. So that's so what are you where, saying? Um, I guess I'm like, it's just frustrating. Like this year, uh, it's like th three deals. Well, dude, um, it's frustrating and, for and everybody, not getting right? Down. Yeah. But I just like compare it to the people who are like, succeeding because that's who i want to hold myself to um but you're right like i am comparing to people who've been in it for like okay. five ten years Th that's even worse i know you've been in the business for a year or two and you're comparing to people to people like that have been doing this for a decade that's even worse you can't compare yeah, yourself bro because like listen, bad, listen to like me myself, danny danny yeah. listen to me it takes time for your business to mature it's like a dividend paying stock right you buy mm -hmm. it and you're making 3% a year. You're like, oh, that's nothing. But after like 10 years, the compounding interest, You're after 10 years, you're like, oh my God, look at all this money I'm making off this investment. When you buy a home, like I bought a, a, uh, I bought a, a duplex and nobody wanted it. It was a hundred grand. Cash flow is like 500 a month. Everybody's like, I don't want that. Well, now that hundred grand, that property's worth 350 and I'm getting 1200 aside, right? I'm making like, 2500 a month and it's worth three times more than i bought it but it took 10 11 years for that to to happen the first couple of years it didn't make anything right it's the same mm -hmm. thing as your business the seeds that you're planting are going to take time to mature into uh to 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 come to fruition into deals and referrals and referrals of referrals it just doesn't happen overnight dude the calls you're making now you're not going to make that much money off of that. You're going to make money off the calls you're making now in three years when your business triples because all the people you connected with this year, that's how this game works. There's no need for you to look at this year and say, oh, my 2023 sucks. You need to be saying my 2025 is going to be a $600,000 year because of what I'm doing now. Let me go harder. Let me go all in. That that's the that's the problem, guys. Like the disconnect between the results and the business is there's a really low correlation between the business we're doing now and getting paid today. It just is. The name of the game is influence. How many people in the market know who we are? Never forget us. It period. And then let time happen. Okay, it's like inflation. You buy an asset, it increases in value. Does it does it shoot to the moon right then? No. You have to own it for a long time. And then it starts like really, and the next thing you know, you're rich. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so true. It's just I just like always am like that quick fix person. You're impatient. Like instant, yeah, bro. Exactly. You're impatient. And if if you want to win big, you have to be numb to that. You just have to be. Because your impatience will make you think you're failing and then you'll start to backtrack and then you'll start to second guess yourself and doubt yourself. And then you'll think, I'm not really, this isn't working when it really is. That's and exactly then, what I'm doing. And then people hear it in your voice. They hear mm -hmm. the um, lack of confidence and the insecurities in your voice when you're talking to them on the phone or in person, like you may not think that they hear you, but they do. There's red flags going off and they're not acting like they hear it. They're playing it off like it's all cool and they like you and stuff, but they're thinking in the back of their head, something's off. And then they don't do business with you and you don't know why. I'm telling you why. Because you're worried that you're not succeeding when you're actually crushing it. So you have a a, a, a false sense of, of, of insecurities and lack of confidence. And now... You're not doing business because of that when you could be crushing it if you just realize that you're killing it. <laughs>
Yeah. Cause it's such a mindset met because it's like 10 deals and three, but I totally get what you're saying. Like, I totally get it. You got to cares on... what you sell this year. I only care about two things. One that you pay your bills and two, that your database is massively uh, expanding. That's it. I would take you over the 10 year guy right now all day long. Like I would bet my money on you that you'll crush the guy that's crushing it now. That's 10 years in the game that you're comparing yourself to. I'd put my money on you over him just based on what you're telling me you're doing day to day. Yeah. All day long. Like you're going to crush them. I can tell you story after story. There are, there's legends around here that literally were, you know, real estate gods that little old Ricky completely annihilated their sales, annihilated hundreds of millions more. You know, that shouldn't have happened. All I did was call some property owners, you know, every day and do a little email and stuff like. Were you calling you know I, the email list religiously? Because I don't I don't call the email list. and I know I need to. I call my database, but I see people click on it. And I really just, again, that's my biggest weakness, which is stupid because that's the most important. But I, I see these people clicking a link for like a new listing in the email or opening it. Should I be mm -hmm. calling them? I think I've heard you and Tom's River say call them quarterly. Um, but just curious what your thoughts are on that or how yeah, you I close call those them. deals. I no? wouldn't call them. Just from a, a weekly email alone and circle prospecting, I can build that business like you that's did. That's all I ever did. That's crazy. Wow. So what you need to do is pick out like your top hundred people and call them once a year. Okay. And then do social media. Do social media. So when you combine what we're doing with the weekly email, calling your top one to 200 people once a year and social media consistently, it is over. You may not be number one this year or next year or the year after, but it's only a matter of time before you are crushing everyone in the market. Just you'll look back and be like, oh my God, where, how did this happen? Right. Mm -hmm. But you've got to get over this lack of uh, patience, bro. Yeah. Cause that's what's last thing. That's what's killing me is I'll show up in the office and I'll put in that work. And then it's like, man, another, you know, month of like no, no deals. And it, again, I don't say it, but it's like, you think this in the back of your head and it affects everything, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, if you have to, um, I mean, you know, if you have to get another job to pay your bills and, and the thing is, I don't, side, I live huh? rent. Like I, I don't have really much bills. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just speaking more general and stuff. Like, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Right. I have uh, a question and I can't thanks, raise your hand <laughs> if you're when you're finished. I'm finished. Go for it. Oh, okay. Um, hi, thank you so much for having this. Um, I think you're wonderful. And I just heard about it this morning. Um, but I am new to the business and I have been, I got a list um, from my title rep from people in an area that I wanted to farm, I guess. And, um, I didn't really have a script, so <laughs> I have been kind of going around and around of, you know, like what I should say to them. Um, I just kind of wanted to introduce myself and then, you know, mention that I was collecting vendors or, um, asking them if they know anyone that's interested in real estate, but you know, I really like your logic and, and I kind of think of it the same way. If somebody was calling me, what would I want to hear? And I really, I don't think I'd really want to hear that, you know, them asking me if I had real estate needs when I don't even know them. Right. Okay. So, so who, who are these people? Where do you, where did you get their info? It's just, a neighborhood. It's just okay. a neighborhood that I so picked. This is just circle prospecting. Yes. Okay. So you're wondering what to say in circle prospecting call? Well, actually, my question is, should I keep doing this, which I'm not really even sure what to say, or should I um, do the expireds and the, or FISBOs, one of those, which seem like they're a lot easier because at least the script sounds really good, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, one, what, so As a new realtor. Yeah. So the thing is, is that all the conversations... Well, once you guys get this, then you can just create leads out of thin air. 
when you get to the place where you can just talk to anybody, it doesn't matter who they are and you turn them into a lead because you're just like trying to get to know who they are and how they're doing and find something in common and see what it is they want to do real estate wise now or in the future. If they have an agent, stay in touch, help them buy and sell, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all, it all kind of turns into the same conversation, right? Whether they're expired for sale by owner, circle prospecting, Zilla lead, Facebook, YouTube, sphere of influence, Metamit, Starbucks, whatever, right? Yeah. You with me? Right on. <laughs> okay. So there's that piece that like all the leads are the same. It's just people in the market. We're trying to help them, you know, using our services. Okay. But what I was saying earlier, um, I built my entire business on just calling random property owners. All I did. I didn't have all these like nice technology platforms to just get data at will of whoever I wanted. You know, I had to drive around and look for, for sale by owner signs. I had to look up expires one at a time. We had like two a day come through. Couldn't go back 10 years worth the snap of a finger and stuff like that. Um, anyway, uh, right now it's like primary homeowners aren't going to sell because they're sitting on such low interest rates. So yeah. That's the most probable situation. But however, for sale by owner said, I'll sell. Expired people said, I'll sell. So for me in this low inventory market, I would be crushing expireds and for sale by owners. It's all I would do. And you can go back 10 years worth of expired data and and call them. Okay. And you just I have, have oh, I'm sorry. You just have unlimited business and people to call. Go ahead. What do you do as a new realtor when you don't have the experience, um, you know, to, to, to I, ha I have no zero transactions. So how do I get an expired or a FISBO to, um, you, you know, want to list with me? I don't really get them to want to list with me. I try to figure out if they still want to sell and why. If, if you know, like I, again, I have to think of myself as um, finding the motivation. I keep using this. Uh, I keep coming back to this example, right. Of being a doctor, you know, if I'm going to be a doctor and I, and I'm trying to identify what this problem is so that I can try to solve the problem, right. This person's hurting. Okay. Let me identify what, where this pain is coming from. And then let me help them fix this problem and get rid of this pain. Same thing with the property owner. You know, like my job is to number one, connect with them and make them feel really comfortable with me. It doesn't matter how many properties you could have sold no properties and accomplish that. That has nothing to do with how many properties you sold to make someone feel comfortable with you and make them your friend, right? And try to connect with them. It takes zero transactions under your belt to do that. Step two is what do they want to do? Okay. They want to buy, they want to sell, they want to do this, they want to do that. Great. What's got you thinking about that? You know, and I'm just going down the road and I keep digging and digging and digging, trying to figure out why this person's trying to do this. And as I'm listening to them, tell me what they want to do and why, then I start formulating a game plan in my mind as their agent to help them accomplish these goals. Then I explain what the game plan is that I came up with to help them accomplish the goals. And then we execute on the game plan. It's not really a question for me of how do I, or, you know, am I their agent? Like I'm their agent, right? Um, I'm going to ask them if they're already working with an agent. I want to establish that they're not already working with someone. And then I'm, I'm assuming I'm their agent and I'm going to take them down the road. I'm not trying to get them to use me. We're already there. We're past that. We're talking. They want to do a deal. I'm here to help. Here's step one, two, three. Excellent. Thank you so much. Cool. What, uh, anybody have any good calls? I know one person said that they got like a million dollar listing or something like that. Does anybody, did anybody have any great calls during the yeah, session? I had, I had, a. I just got a listing appointment for today at, at uh, five 30 and I got, Three people, they said they're not ready, but I can keep in touch and they gave me their email. Nice. One of them I'm texting with right now, actually. She's probably going to change her mind. But that was the first four conversations I had, and all of them were positive. Mm -hmm. Next Sweet. five listings. Yep. 
That's great, man. Anybody else have any great little breakthrough moments, great conversations, anything cool happen? I got four yeah. emails. Oh, nice. What what was it? I got four emails in the Milwaukee area. Nice. Four yeah. emails. Four um, emails, four emails in an hour. I mean, yeah. You do that yeah. two out two hours a day. It's eight emails. Let's see, that's 160 a month. Um, 160 a month. You know, what is that? 1,600 in 10 months, like 18, it's like 2,000, let's say. A little under 2,000 a year. 2,000, year two is 4,000. Year three is 6,000. Year four is uh, 8,000. Year five is 10. You do that every day for two hours, not even three or four, just two hours. And you got 10,000 owners you talked to that had great conversations and gave you their email. Now I'm just going to ask you guys at that point, year five, how big is your business? Really big, crazy big. Number one in the market, big. Yeah. It's not, this isn't rocket science. And that's good for me. <laughs> Who else we got? Um, this I got three emails and I had four good conversations and somebody that had been listening coming into my KV core I have two appointments out of my KV core I mm. called half of them I called were foreclosures and there were so much so many DNCs that I decided to call in my uh KV core because I have like 20 people that visited in the past three weeks that I haven't contacted and mm. out of that I have two appointments Got you. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else? All right. I have something I'll come on video. All right. So uh, I got two, uh, one email, and I got another listing appointment for Sunday in Norwalk, Connecticut for one, two. Uh, so, guys, it's just a matter of calling. And I'm not better than anybody else. Trust me. So, yeah. Nice, nice. Anybody else want to share? I had one email, someone looking to purchase. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I do have cool. a question. Go ahead. Um, so when they ask for email, sometimes like this lady, she just hang up. She said, oh, I'm not. And when they, they don't want to give you the email and they said, uh, they say, oh, um, text me. This is my sign. Text me your information. What would you do? If somebody was kind of there. Somebody was unmuted there right when you were kind of asking that. What? What was the end of that question? No, uh, sometimes when I ask for the email, they said, oh, uh, or either they said, I have your information, I give you a call if I need. Or sometimes they said, oh, uh, just uh, when you need something, just uh, just send me uh, your information, my text message, because I have the cell phone number. So what so how do you, you So what are you saying you're going to email them? So um, I said that I keep them in contact like every uh every quarter i have this system that um keep them updated with the market value okay they they don't want that so when you tell when you tell them you're going to send them that they're like oh how do i get out of this i don't want i don't want that because you're basically saying hey i'm going to send you some cold information like just some cold hard facts that five other agents are sending you and i'm not really going to give my opinions on it or anything i'm just going to send you like some numbers right yeah. They don't want that. They're getting it from five other agents or 10 or 15. So, so guys, again, don't tell them you're going to send them all this information or weekly emails or market reports. They're going to immediately say, no, what you say is, Hey, I'd love to stay in touch with you for, you know, when the day comes that you want to do something, is it okay if we just stayed in touch? Great. What's a good email? That's it. You're just saying you want to stay in touch with them. Hey, I, as a human, as, as a as a as a neighbor, would love to stay in touch with you. You want to stay in touch? Yeah, great. What's a good email for you? Cool. I'll stay in touch with you there. That's why they're saying that because you say you're going to send them all this info, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want any info." Even though they do, they don't know how you're going to do the info. And if you're doing cold statistics like here's listings here's market data without you giving your two cents on that like here's the data and here's what i think about it type thing 
then they're going to unsubscribe because it's just, it's just numbers. It makes sense. Somebody's saying, what do I send? Let me, I'm going to put this link in the description. All right. There's a full training. There's, t there's uh tutorials. There's, um, there's uh templates. Ricky, you're muted. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Uh, how about now? Okay, good. There Thanks. we go. I don't know where you lost me. Anyway, there's a link to all the email stuff, templates, et cetera. Devante, what's up? Hey, Ricky. I really appreciate appreciate your videos. I, I enjoy your content. I watch it every day. Um, I have a question. Do you do any for rent by owners or anything like that? And would you kind of do your same type of cir uh, circle prospecting script on them? Just mix it up and say, you know, I see you have a property you're trying to rent and da, da 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 And then are you trying to figure out what would be your approach on for rent by owners? Cause I know you said you focus on FISBOs and no, no, um, no, no, no. For rent by months. owner. I love for rent by owners. Right. Remember in the beginning, I said at the end of every conversation say, Hey, before I let you go, let me ask mm -hmm. you this. If I've had a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested? Yeah. Right. Okay. These people already own rental properties and you know that these are prime candidates. These people are <clears throat> buying and selling in this market. Those are like prime, prime, prime. So I would call them up. They're trying to rent this house. And I, so I would use that. Hey, I see you're trying to rent this house. You know, have you got it rented yet? You know, see what they say. All right. Say, okay, cool. I'll keep my ears open for that. Let me ask you this. Are you buying any more rental properties right now? You know, what are you in the market for? You know, do you have an agent you normally work with? You know, kind of send you some off-market deals. Get in there with them. All right. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, I failed to mention those, man. Like, the for rent by owners, for let me rephrase. For rent by owners, for sale by owners, and uh, I actually like for rent by owners better than for sale by owners, to be honest. Why do you feel like you don't have to um, nurture well, them as much? Uh, well, investors buy no matter what the market's doing, number one. Yeah. So they're buying and selling. Number two, um, a for sale by owner is kind of anti-agent from the beginning. You kind of have to work yourself in there a little. You know, you kind of have to work it a little more to kind of get in there. And, of course, there's other agents that are trying to do the same thing. You can differentiate yourself with a couple of little extras, you know. Um, Shane does like a, dr a, a drone picture thing. Yeah. Um, like you can do some things, but it's like, those are extra things. You know, I like things that don't take extra things to get there. And with the for rent by owner, it's like, Hey, you buying some more of these? Cause you know, I want to, I want to help you find some more rentals if that's what you want to do. And maybe we can establish a relationship and, you know, I can even help you sell some of these properties later on when you, you know, decide you want to start liquidating. Yeah, you know, like whatever, their, whatever their situation yeah. is, you know what I'm saying? But they're, in, you know, they're investors already mm -hmm. and they're managing their own properties. You know, I mean, yeah. those are just the kind of people I like to deal with. Hey, Ricky, do you on the for rent by owners, if they you I would assume you allow them to formulate their own offer price. Yeah, I mean, you give them guidance as far as fair market value, but as far as ROI and stuff, you don't really give like a ted talk on roi i'm assuming not at all okay they know what they like here here's a deal okay. tell me what you tell me what you think you know they come back to you they're like well what's the rental can you find out what the expenses are yeah let me let me ask the agent or the owner or whatever i'll get it for you you know cool. and then once you do a couple deals with them or you sent them some properties and then they you kind of have a better idea of what they're looking for you know, in a deal, then you can already kind of have everything, all the information they normally ask for. You can start to have that ready every time you present something because you know they're going to ask it anyway. Makes sense. Oren. Ricky, hey, man, how you doing? Good, bro. How you doing? Great, man. Hey, one question for you. Uh, once we have listings, like in our area, inventory is starting to creep up. You know, there's more competition. We got a ton of builders building tons of new homes, giving incentives, this and that. Uh, so our listings are starting to sit, you know, 60, 90, 100 plus days. What are you doing in terms of your follow-up with those clients, your sellers? Um, 
just to let them know, hey, I'm still working for you. I'm still here. Like, what is your check-in process? Or is there something you're doing to help your listing stand out when the market has more inventory and more competition like it does now? Um, Things that are I have listed already? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it's always going to be kind of the same conversation. I, what I normally did was called all my listed properties at least every two weeks. If I'm not talking to them more frequently, sometimes I would do every week, just depending on what's happening. Um, I might do it every week in today's market. Um, just cause how yeah. fast or slow things are moving. It's just like a very uncertain market. Uh, there's like pockets where this price range is, is, is performing way differently than this price range over here. And, uh, different local markets are like, uh, behaving like completely different than like other markets in the U S it's like really weird, uh, thing. So you might want to even do it every week, you know, like block off every, you know, Wednesday afternoon or something. Um, and call your your listings and just check in and stuff. And even if there's no activity, that's a check in. It's like I just want you to know, you know, nobody's really had any uh, inquiries or anything. You know, there one listed over here. You know, one one under contract over there. You can update them on things that's happening. You can even tell them exactly what you just told me. Hey, builders are offering this. That's you know, I'm showing property and it seems like every one of them are buying new construction because they're getting this, yeah. this, and this. Um, figure out what those builders are doing, you know, like, are they buying down the, the, the mortgage where the rates, uh, cheaper? Okay. Let's get with the lender and kind of go ahead and put that, put that package together. Hey, are you willing to buy down the rate like the builders were doing so that, um, you know, that you can be like competitive with the rates that the people are getting on new construction. Whereas, you know, we're, you know, uh, we're the same price per square foot, but we're a bigger home. And we're offering the same mortgage rate because we're we're buying it down for the buyer. Um, so I don't know, man. It just depends on really it comes back to the seller, why they're selling, how motivated they really are. Mm -hmm. Some of them are okay with it just riding it out. Right. Some of them, some of them want it gone now. Uh they're willing to reduce down to whatever they have to do to get it done. Some people don't want to reduce, but they want it gone now. And <laughs> those are the tough ones. Um, yeah. but anyway, um, no, and what you shared earlier about, you know, who's, who's the want to and the need to, that was, I think, I don't know if I've heard you share that before, but that was just kind of a, a mind shift for me because I'm looking at my clients and I know the ones that have to relocate cause they're moving to another state. And then I know the ones that are just like, yeah, if we get this much, we'll sell it. And if not, you know, we're gonna take it off the market in a few weeks mm -hmm. and just kind of you know, in my mind, just preparing and categorizing those people, um, was big. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. 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 I, I, that's the thing. Everybody's trying to get everybody to close now. Good afternoon. How you guys doing? I Fantastic, am, a, I'm right? a mortgage broker, so it's interesting to see how you guys are doing this, but I've been a lender since 2004. So I was there during that crash. Um, so really my, I guess my question is how can a lender support you agents in a market like this and how things are evolving over the next few months, next year or so? How can what? How can a lender support agents in a market like this? How can we best support? Oh, I, like, I don't know, honestly. Um, can I help? <laughs> what's up? Can I help? I have a, uh, this is, I'm new to real estate, as I said, but um, I have been doing uh, just a few open houses. And every time I do, I call a lender because I don't want to be in the open house alone. And um, they all offer something different. But this one, this lender made this brochure and she gave three scenarios um, for the payments, down mm -hmm. payment, the programs. And I think that this was really smart. So no. For sure. Yeah, we absolutely do this. Yes. And she also sent me some rent versus own flyers. I don't have those here, but mm -hmm. so I'm going to use those to go door knocking. <laughs> try it. Try it. Try it. I mean, you right? could call them up and like try to um, try to like figure out how to work with, you know, have something like in place. Um you know, that kind of helps people with their rates or something like that. 
you know? Um, but honestly, I think with lenders, it comes down to more like the relationship and how you handle the deal. You know, um, like the lender I've used forever, he just never lets me down. Like if he can't do it, he tells me right then. If he can do it, he's like, this is no problem. And it, and he he's never came back and said, I can't do it after he said that. Or he's like, I'm going to have a few challenges, but I'm going to, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I think we'll be fine. You know? And then we kind of monitor those things versus some lenders I've worked with, they kind of hide all that stuff. They're like, Oh, it'll be great. Come to find out there's serious problems and we couldn't even get the deal done. I think honesty and just being, you know, just being a good like professional, you know, just doing a good job. I think it's what you should be doing. Oh, of course. Bare minimum, yeah. I think. <laughs> doing Outside a good job. of that. Yeah, we, you know. we've, yeah, we've come in and saved deals where the lenders did just that, just promised the world and didn't look at files until a week before closing. And then the people that you save the deal for, they'll use you forever. And so just try to stack your list of people who, you know, who want to use you forever. Hey, Ricky, can you go over your um, coaching, your services? Or We're doing it. You're looking at it. I mean, your pricing and, you know, what you offer. <laughs> I don't charge anything and I don't have any programs or anything. What? <laughs> mm -hmm. You're just free? Uh-huh. Wow. How often um, you... That's amazing. That's amazing. You uh, give... I can give you, let me find this link. Uh, actually, this is, I can give you this link right here. Um, let's see. So if you go there, that goes here. And then um, you, I've got the scripts, the weekly email stuff, that listing uh, like demonstration. Now this, the 60 day course um it's really cool because that is at zero to diamond.com but let me show you what i've got there on that link uh it's actually right here so i did it live i did like a call every week um and when you go to that link there that's in the link i just shared like i've got this business plan kind of laid out here and then you go to zero to diamond.com to like get the additional stuff you need. But then I've got week one, week two, week three, week four, five, six, seven, eight that you can kind of watch at the beginning of the week, each week, you know, for six, for eight weeks and kind of follow along and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have any like paid stuff and reach out if you have questions, like uh, message me on Instagram or email me or whatever. If you, if stuff comes up, I'm happy to help. Danny, what you got? So question, I have a, a FISBO preview today. It's only been on for a day. Um, and just curious your strategy um, going on FISBO previews, not like where it's like, hey, I'm coming and we're going to go over how to list your property. More like, hey, I'm coming to see if it's a potential fit. For Why are they selling? That I have. Um, he's got to get it sold because he just got a rental nearby. Mm. Um, and he's motivated because I asked him like, if he was to list it, does he have an agent he's going to work with? Um, you know, I didn't ask that. <laughs> yeah. That see, see, we have to dig, we have to know what's going on. That's our job as a professional. We have to understand. Uh, so maybe you situations. can help with this Ricky. Like when I asked that, I feel like awkward because I don't want to hear him say he has someone and how Why? to deal with that. But it, in my head, it really saves you a lot of time, bro. No, you're and right. You don't have to go on this preview if their dad is an agent. Yeah, and now, and so now you true. can spend the time you would have spent thinking about it, like you are now, thinking about deals that, of people that actually are in position to use you as an agent, and without driving to the preview and without doing all that stuff, dude. The more so questions you can ask, ask like... and the better than you can understand the situation, the more efficient you're going to be because you're going to be able to make better decisions. And like, do, okay, let's just say it like this, Danny. If it, if you took, let's say this whole situation takes you an hour, making the call, driving there, having the preview, the whole nine yards, let's say it takes you an hour and you do one of those a week. Okay. And you don't pre, you don't, you don't really pre-qualify in terms of, you know, go really deep with why they want to sell if they have an agent, et cetera, et cetera. And you just do this. Um, 
Are you going to get some listings? Yes. But are you going to waste a lot of time? Yes. And the listings you got, you could have got 10 times more because an hour a week is 52 hours in a year. Okay. So it's like, oh, it's just an hour a week. No, no. It's 52 hours over the course of a year. Do you know how much damage you can do in 52 working hours? That could be the difference in you tripling your business. But you're chalking it up to, oh, it's just an hour a week. When if you would ask more questions to be more efficient and, and be more protective of your time, to spend that time and invest it in way more efficient activities, then you could blow up. But you're too scared to ask if he has an agent because you don't want to hear him say that he does when you're not going to get every deal on the planet. You know what I mean? So let's go yes, ahead and find on. out right now, like, does his son have a license and he's definitely going to use him? Great. I'll just keep your, I'll keep your house in mind if I run across a buyer. You know, I'll call your son if I come up with a buyer. Have a good day. Boom. We're not thinking about um, it anymore. And now we invest that hour into talking to, or like the gentleman did today, he picked up four emails in an hour. You could get four more people. And what does that do? Oh, it's just four emails. Dude, over the next five years, those four emails can make you a million bucks. Would you Got call it? back that that person if I called them this morning or would you just go? Because I do want to start previewing in general because I'm a newer agent, just to learn the product that I'm selling, because I don't want to be good and not even know the product. Like I need to learn more because I don't have much. Does that make sense? Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Um, I just feel like you can like learn what houses look like when you're showing them and stuff, when it's like when you have to do it for a reason rather than just doing it to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like chalking it up. Like you, it sounds like you're doing a lot of chalking it up. Hey, Rick. Yo, what do you mean by that? I I uh I used to go after Fizbos and uh I I listed five Fizbos in one week yeah. before the pandemic. And it was all about the scripts. Once I got my script down, the first thing I said is listen, is your goal to sell at the highest price, least amount of time with least amount of hassle. So there's five things you need to do. Number one, you gotta price it right, you gotta stage it, you gotta market it, you gotta market it to the agents. So I had my scripts down. Yeah. And then I say, when are you gonna hire when do you plan on hiring an agent? They'll yep. say, "Oh, I'm going to give it about a month." Okay, yeah. great. I'd love to uh, qualify. I'd love to um, apply for the job. Yeah, that's it Done. right there. See, that's what I love. Like right there, that and that's what I used to say too. Like, how long are you going to go before you decide you you know you're going to let an agent have this? When are you going to throw in the, the towel and list it? How long are you going to try to sell it on your own? You know, and they'll tell you. Like, oh, we'll we decide, we'll what. try it for, you know, a couple of weeks or a month. And then we maybe may, you know, if nothing happens, we may look at, oh, great. Did you have an agent in mind? Did you ever yeah. do that, Ron? Did you ever try to figure out oh, yeah. if they had, yeah. hundred I mean, percent. You have you, an agent in mind? got to really understand the full situation so that you can, number one, fully help this person, right? It always comes back to providing them a service, not just doing a deal. And, and, and then I would uh, always ask them, when do you plan on having an open house? They And none of them, they all said, never. I said, well, and then so the scripts, let, well, let me sit down and show you what we need to do to get your house sold at the highest price in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. And then, boom, I'd go right into my scripts. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You got it, Danny? Yeah, I got it. Um, you were saying something, though, I forget. You were touching on something. Um, I said there's a lot of chalking it up. Yeah. What do you you're mean just by like, that? Exactly? Oh, well, well, I mean, like, you're just like, oh, I'll, I'll just go. Like, you make you make other reasons to do stuff that maybe not doesn't make sense time wise for efficiency. You're like, well, I, I, yeah, I need to go preview stuff anyway. It's yep. like, well, just look at stuff when you have when it's when it's you're you're doing it because for a reason, not just to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good point. Got to be super efficient. Like yeah. we the guy what. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but do we all want to be like monsters? Do we want to be beasts? You know, like being mm -hmm. a beast means being incredibly efficient and very protective of our time and you and investing our time to where we can multiply our time. Got Sometimes so you have you to think about back? what the pros and cons could be. What's that? Would you call him back and ask like like two hours before? Just curious if you were to list or at this point, just go and chalk it up as a learning lesson. So he even used the word. Well, um, you you used it too, so I figured. I think that, just go. I, just I, go. I think at this point you would just go. Just go. Yeah. yeah. You're already there now. Got it.
But really just like learn it. from learn from the whole experience though, and then be more efficient on the next one. Got it. Thanks, Ricky. Alex. Hey, yeah. One thing I to note is your time is your most valuable asset. That's the one thing I've learned for the most part. I've been in it for ten years, and I'm trying to find out how I could be more efficient on everything that I do, delegating buyers, pro, you know, buyers agents, listing agents, X Y Z. Uh, one question for you, Ricky. I know that this is a circle. This is a prospecting call, so I don't want to take over too much. But I was wondering, what is your best strategy for building relevant social media content? You, you mentioned the weekly email, the prospecting, and then finally, social media in the afternoon. What is the best strategy for us to get that going? I have a good database of past clients, and when I make a post, a lot of people like it. Um, but I feel like maybe I'm not adjusting to the market, and even though I get response, but I'm wondering if I could do better. What do you mean adjusting to the market, given market data and breaking news? Yeah, that's what I've noticed that you do a lot is like you you have the 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 screen behind you with the, like the latest headline and then you're like talking on that data. I love that. I've never done anything like that. Is that what you would recommend other agents? Because yeah. what happened, what I do is I post a lot of, hey, look, another happy customer. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, hey, check out this new area, X, Y, Z, new, new construction area. But I want to be a little bit more... Uh, Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm asking the wrong questions, but I just feel like I could do. Better. I understand what you're saying. Uh, the answer is, um, yeah, like you always need to be evolving your, your social, right? If you're going to be a consistent content creator, the person you are on social this year is different than eight months ago to 24 to next year. You're, you're different. Like mine today looks different than what it did just six months ago to last year to five years ago. It's going to look different next year. It's going to have a different message. It's going to be a different look. Um, so it, it, it needs to be evolving. And so you're asking the right questions because you're thinking, how do I make it better? How do I, and, and that's like the natural progression of a content creator. You create content and then you kind of feel like it's kind of plateaued. Everybody's probably tired of seeing the same thing. And then you mix yeah, it up a little bit exactly. and make it a little different. Everybody's excited about this new look again for a little while. Then they kind of get used to that. Then you morph into the, your next your next chapter of what your social looks like. So you're always going to be changing it up. So that's just one thing that's just always going to happen and be a cycle. Okay. It's not just like uh, you're going to change it up this one time and start doing articles in the background. And that's what you're going to do forever. You know, do that for a little while and then do something else. But to answer your question, what should you guys be doing? Well, there's so many different avenues to social you know there's pictures there's video there's different formats and styles uh, there's written word there's audio there's a lot of different there's short form written long form written there's the different platforms there's so much going on with social so i can't say everybody needs to make reels or do long yeah. form youtube or make make content on breaking news about your market or do uh local events and you know, local businesses or write blogs on this. I don't know. You can't yeah. do everything. So you have to kind of figure out what do I like in the social media world? You know, do I like, do I feel good about making reels or do I like to write a, a blog a week and put it out there? Do I like to make a long form video? Do I like to make reels on my listings where it doesn't even show my face, you know, like great music, great cuts going through my listing. You know, those are really crushing it right now. So to answer your question, I don't know. And I think for everybody, it's different. You got to kind of figure out what, what you like, you know, in that social world and kind of go all in on it. You know, maybe like I know a guy in Mobile, Alabama, he has a podcast about Mobile, Alabama, and it's amazing. And he crushes oh. it. He gets so much it's business from it. Right. He doesn't do Facebook or um, he doesn't do uh, like a reels like he doesn't do any of that stuff. He just has this podcast. He puts it on iTunes and then he has it on YouTube. He has a video as well and he crushes it. He doesn't do any short form video. Um, What's his name, Ricky? What's his name? His name is Jeff Jones. Uh, yeah, question look, on the reels. Yeah. Look him um, up. Dude's crushing yeah. it. I have a question on the reels. Is your goal for the reel to go viral per se, or are you trying to hit your your past database, your past client, or are you just trying to hit as many people as possible? I mean, I would imagine that it's as many people as possible, but what's like the metric that makes you satisfied with reels? If I like the content, 
You know, okay. if I watch the video before I post it, I'm like, I like this. This is this is good. I can kind of tell if it's going to be something that performs well. Sometimes yeah. if if something goes viral and goes to a million views, like those always catch me off guard. I never, I never like, I'm never like, oh, this one's going to go have a million views. Um, but then when it happens, uh, you're like, oh, okay, you know, why did that happen? <laughs> you know, my rest of my videos okay. are exactly the same. But yeah. um, the algorithm's weird. No, I, I think um, to answer your question, it's just that I like the video. I was like, I like this, and I think it'll help people. Boom, post it. Like yeah. I just posted one. Um, I was like, Can you show uh, it? an hour ago. Um, and it's like fifty likes, which is like low, really super low. Um, I kind of knew it wasn't going to perform well, but I like the video. I don't really yeah. care about likes and stuff, you know what I mean? Or like views and stuff like that. In my mind, since I do have a large past client database in my head, at least it's it's a good conversation starter for for my circle, right? Uh, it, you know, usually the things that I find interesting, my close friends also find interesting. And it's like, hey, let's go out and grab some coffee. And we want to, you know, we just chat about the market or whatever's going on. So mm -hmm. um, I guess if I like the video, then one, that's a win. And then two, if it's a conversation starter to network, great. That's a, that's another big win right there. Yeah. Thank you. Just figure out what you like on social and just do it consistently. Cool. Anybody got one more question before we dip? I've had one question. Go ahead. Like some, a list of like really old expireds. And I'm like, if they're like a year old, what is a good way to kind of just open up just kind of the same way? Like, look, I see you had your house listed last year. I just was thinking it, or wanted to call and reach out and see if you're still thinking about selling or. No, don't say that. Um, you're saying too many words there and mm -hmm. they're immediately, they're going to be in that fight or flight. And they're going to be like, how do I get the hell out of this off this call? Yeah. Say, Hey, I see you were trying to sell this house at one point, whatever happened with that. Whatever happened with that. All Make right. it really short and sweet because. If you're like, hey, I see you're trying to sell this house at one point. I was just calling because I wanted to check on that and see if there's, you know, if you thought you might be wanting to, you know, still sell it. They may have already sold it. They may have sold it a year ago. You just didn't realize it in the data that it relisted and sold. And here you are asked. It's just like, what happened with that? And yeah. then let them tell you. Zillow, they haven't sold, but I'm like, but yeah, I like that. I like just. Do what now? I looked it out on Zillow and they haven't sold yet, but. See, okay. Let's get back to efficiency. Okay. Yeah. So if they sold that property, you don't call them. Mm -hmm. Why? That's a good question. I should just go through them and just make the calls without taking that time to look up each property. Number one, the time you spent to look that up is wasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I could have been on the phone. Yeah. Well, that, but number two, then you're not calling somebody that may be looking to buy or sell right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, why, why aren't this... The, you're focused on the listing. Right. And what I'm saying is use the listing as an excuse. Use that property as an excuse to talk to them. You don't care if it resold. Who cares? The right. goal is not to list the property. The goal is to use the property as an excuse to see if you can connect with this person to see what it is that they might be looking to do now. And if not yeah. in the future, do they have an agent? Can we stay in touch? Right? Oh, right. you know, whatever happened with that? Oh, we, oh, we sold that a long time ago. Oh, cool. Where'd you move to? How do you like it? Are you going to make another move soon? Do you have an agent you're going to work with? Yeah. I'd love to work with you maybe in the future. You know, would it be okay if we stayed in touch? You know, you never know where these conversations are going to go. You know, well, let me ask you this before you go. If I had a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested? Oh, for real? You buy rental properties? Cool. What do you like duplexes, fourplexes, single family, on the water, vacation, Airbnbs? What do you like? <laughs> what mm -hmm. you need i got it you love it saying? thank you thank yeah, you yeah so like don't waste time looking up info just okay. make calls and connect with people okay good yeah. advice cool. thank you cool 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 all right guys hey enjoyed it happy friday you guys go crush it i'll be in sarasota next week vegas the two weeks after that miami two weeks after that uh i'll do another one of these in october probably mid-october ish so um, I'll send out emails and all that stuff. All right. You guys hit me on um, Instagram if you need something or just email me. 
happy to help. And, um, yeah, you guys, you guys crush it. Thank you guys for, uh, for joining. Enjoyed listening to you guys make calls and, um, like literally the world is your oyster right now. Like you can, you can absolutely do whatever you want to do in this business over the next five years. All right. Thank you so Thank much. This is awesome. Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Be good. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much. Great. Bye. Bye.